One. <clears throat> Call the meeting of the Finance Committee for the City Council to order for Monday evening, April the 6th, 2015. Um, just councils and to the viewers at home, I received a phone call um, this, this afternoon in regards to a, uh, a cable signal. And the, they're having difficulty with the live signal uh, with cable, which could mean that, that our show here or our meeting this evening could be interrupted somewhat <coughs> as people are viewing us at, um, at home. So that being said, sure be it will tape record and we'll, we'll be seen again uh, starting tomorrow afternoon. I believe they start about 4 o'clock p.m. Um, in its entirety and, and should be in a normal stand. But this evening, as people, again, are watching, it could have some interruptions. They just um, are having some difficulties, and uh, I, I guess that's something that they need to work on in the future. So I just want to make sure everybody uh, understands that, uh, that situation. Great. Councilor Barnes uh, contacted me a little bit ago, and she's running a little behind time, and she will be, uh, be here shortly. Uh, Councilor Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I'd like to take a moment of personal privilege uh, City of Brockton lost a, a, a great benefactor this past week. Uh, there are very few lives in Brockton that have not been touched by Tom Shields. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club, of which I used to be a board member, would quite literally not even be open to this day if it weren't for the, Tom Shields and his family. Uh, Trinity Catholic Academy, Stonehill College, the, the list is endless of what he's done for the people of Brockton and the people of Massachusetts. Uh, a great man, a great story, and uh, he passed away this past week and I send I'm sure on behalf of all of us, I'd send his family our condolences, and I'd like to ask for a moment of privilege, a moment of uh, silence for Mr. Shields. Certainly, Councilor. Councilors. May he rest in peace. Amen. Mr. Uh, Chairman, now I'd like Cruz. to make a motion to take uh, number nine out of order. Uh, Second. Motion's been made and seconded that we take item number nine out of order. All in favor? Opposed? We'll take number nine first. Okay. Madam Clerk. Order. Transfer of 75000 <laughs> from the personal <coughs> department personal services benefits 75000 to the election commission personal services 55000 and election commission purchase services 20000 in order to cover the anticipated cost of the special election on May 12, 2015 regarding the casino gambling in the city. These costs, in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts regulations, will be reimbursed to the city by the casino developer, whether the referendum is successful or not. The funding source is unexpected funds in the personnel department who will not be required this year. Provided Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John McGeary, Executive Director, and Marion Cruz, Personnel Director. Good evening, uh, Mr. McGeary. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Councilors. And on behalf of the City Council, I know you lost your, your mother-in-law, so our sympathy to you and uh, to Jan and the family. Thank you, Eric. Truly really appreciate that. Thank you, <coughs> Councilor. Questions? Uh, Questions, Councilor? It's, it's um, the money, obviously, that's necessary to run this special election. It'll be reimbursed. If they don't reimburse it, they can go no further. It's, it, there, is a, there is some uh, strength behind the requirement for them to repay us. Move to recommend favorable. Second. Thank you. Motion's been made and seconded to move uh, favorably to, back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full City Council in favor of recommendation. Mr. Chairman? Councilor Cruz. Along the same lines, I'd like to ask that we take number 16 out of order so Mr. Gary can get home with his family. Motion's been made and seconded. We take number 16 out of order. All in favor? Opposed? Madam Clerk, would you please read item number 16? <laughs> Ordered in compliance with the provisions of the election laws, notice is hereby given that the city preliminary will be held on Tuesday, September 22, 2015, and that the city election will be held on Tuesday, November 3, 2015. Invited John McGeary, Executive Director. Good evening again, Mr. McGeary. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Motion recommend favorably. Say again. On the, on the motion. On the motion, Councilor Cruz. And then Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McGeary, I had some calls. I know this uh, it's a mm. tough date <coughs> we're looking at. Um, and if I had it correctly, and I hope my constituents will forgive me if I don't, Tuesday, September 22nd is Yom Kippur, correct? Correct, Council. Starting at, I believe, sundown. Correct. Now, if we were to move this back to the 15th, 15th is Rosh Hashanah? It's Rosh Hashanah. Um, I've had some constituents ask that we move it to the 15th, but could you explain? I believe you did some investigation. Could you? Kind of enlighten us? Certainly, Councillor. Actually, the original schedule was far to be on the 15th, uh, which I, I was aware of being Rosh Hashanah, and I also knew that by moving it the following week would put, put it on Yom Kippur. The problem is, is Councillor, um, 
is that either, both dates have difficulty. So to be enlightened, I contacted the rabbi up at Temple Beth Amuna and asked for the rabbi's uh, guidance in this. And the recommendation from the rabbi was to hold it on the 22nd because the holy day doesn't begin until sundown. Sundown is fairly late, still in September. <coughs> And um, she, her plan, as she stated to me, was to make sure her congregation knew that they had plenty of time to get out before sundown to do their uh, civic duty and vote. So it was on her recommendation that I, I presented this to you, to the council for um, vote. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, yes. Mr. McGarry. Um, <clears throat> on the same, same light as Mr. Cruz, uh, I too have been, you know, contacted by uh, several people specifically uh, about this issue about Yom Kippur being the Day of Atonement and it's the world's largest holiday. Um, and again, I, I, I want to first of all applaud you for reaching out to the rabbi to get her, uh, you know, her viewpoint on this. Um, I, I just want to make sure that everybody understands this because the, the call I got today um, from a person that, that's a uh, practicing Jewish person does not go to Temple Beth Amun, it goes to a different temple. Uh, and his viewpoint was that um, Yom Kippur is a much holier day, and I'm Catholic so I don't know this, but it's a much more holier day uh, in the Jewish calendar than Rosh Hashanah. Um, but the rabbi at Temple Beth Amun assured you that in her opinion, it would be better to do it on Yom Kippur? Yes, Counselor. It was her opinion that um, after much discussion between the two of us, between the two holy days, that that would be the better of the two because of the issue. It, um, evidently, the, the preceding week, they were into the holy day. So the actual election day was a holy day. And uh, this, this holy day of, of Yom Kippur doesn't start until sundown. sundown. So, um, and polls close at 8 o'clock, um, you know, sundown, I'd say, in September is between 6, 6 and why is it? And why is it, is it a timing situation that we couldn't change it to a different day? Well, the, the other issue, well, the other issue would be if you go further back, this is the day after Labor Day, and now you're incurring significant costs to the city. No, in terms of pushing it forward, we can't because of the date in November, is that correct? Yes, Council, you, 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 we have to have the time because it, it, it doesn't end when the election ends. We have to have time for recount issues. Then we have to go through the process of pro notification programming, you know, absentee ballot uh, period. So it, it would put an extreme crunch on that. Other communities have done similar to the things that we are doing. They have. Yeah, some, okay. some have moved, have left it as is. Some have moved it to the 22nd like we have. Okay. Well, I, I, as I'm requesting that you do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McGarry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. On the motion. Councilor Stewart. Uh, Mr. McGarry, how are you? Good, Councilor. Good. I Thank know you. in the past we've had uh, elections on days that were not Tuesday. So I believe there was a special election on Thursday uh, some time ago. So does it have to be a Tuesday? It's a, by our charter. It's on a Tuesday. On the Tuesday, that was a state election, and and it was a vote of the state that changed it. I see. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Council. Any other councils? Motion's been made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. McGeary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, councils. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we'll go back to order number one. Order. Kevin Hughes of Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invite you, Kevin Hughes. Right to the Good evening, Mr. Hughes. How are you? Good. How are you? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, I'd just simply like to say I would like to get that position. I thought about it for a while. I was in law enforcement at Suffolk County's uh, Sheriff's Department for over 30 years, and I kind of missed doing that kind of work, so to speak, and just like to, you know, serve the community. Motion to approve. Second. Very good. Motion for maidens. And seconded to uh, recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for serving. Thank you. Order number two. Order. Jonathan Cronshaw of Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton as for a term of three years invited Jonathan Cronshaw. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Yourself? Anything you'd like to say before the council? Um, sorry, no. Okay. All right. Councilors? 
Mr. Chairman, I got a question. Council Sullivan. Good evening, sir. Good sir, could you just briefly tell us your background relative to law enforcement and what would make you uh, a, a valid constable candidate? I have two uncles that are Brockton police officers. It's something I've always wanted to do. At the age of 18, I got a nice union job in the for 12 years. Um, my stepfather's an attorney. Like I said, it's something I've always wanted to do, but being with my job for 12 years, I don't want to jeopardize. I just want to serve the community. Everything is... Do you currently have a firearms license in Massachusetts? I do, sir. Okay. For Brockton. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're Thank welcome, you, sir. Councilor. Move for a favorable. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, send back to the full <coughs> city council with favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the city council with favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Madam Clerk, number three. Order James Doucette of Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited James Doucette. Good evening, Mr. Doucette. How are you? Good evening, Good. sir. Very well. Anything you'd like to say before the council? Yes, sir. My name is James Doucette. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, thank you for the invitation to appear here tonight. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Brockton. I own a home on Torrey Street here. This will be my third term as constable for this city. It is my fondest wish to be in the service of this community. I take the role of constable very seriously, and I always endeavor to carry out my duties in a conscientious and socially responsible manner. Thank you. Favorable recommendation. Second. Motion to be made and seconded to send back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for serving. We will move to item number four, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 2000 from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Grant to the Refuse Department Recycling Containers Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, and Patrick Sullivan, Recycling Coordinator. Good evening, Patrick. How are you? Good evening, Councillors. Very well, thank you. Little presentation. Of um, we received a $2,000 grant. Uh, in order to do something small for, to uh, improve the community, improve recycling. And we're gonna be getting uh, a number of their public recycling containers. Uh, the thing that makes them a little bit unique is that uh, they can have uh, uh, art sent and put on the side, so they look nice. They're gonna be an attractive design thing. We're gonna be giving those a uh, couple to the Council on Aging, who will be working with uh, I guess they have a high school program where the uh, elders over there mentor with them. They'll be able to, uh, to create the art, which will be sent to this company that puts it on the barrel. So um, it's essentially what it is. Very good. Move to approve. Motion. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Just send back on the motion. On the motion. Councilor I have Azak. a few questions. Good evening, Mr. S uh, good, evening. good evening, Councilor Azak. How many, do you know how many containers you'll be getting? Um, I think we'll probably be getting probably four or five with the four grant. <clears throat> Okay, great. And um, I had an, an idea, possibly. I know that you sure. said somewhere at the senior ce um, center, but how about the high rises and their like rec rooms? Have you thought about that, or that that would be fine? We hadn't uh, really decided exactly where we were going to put them, but any ideas that uh, anyone has, we'd entertain. Very well. good. Um, well, thank you. I think this is great, and um, this just makes me think of um, a program that I look forward to talking to you about, which is our recycling uh, bin. So I look forward to, to discussing that because I believe it's a problem in our city with the litter that's being tossed everywhere. So look forward to being able to get some of those universal bins at one point. So thank, thank you. Counselor. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Mr. President. Item number five, Madam Clerk. Order a transfer of $5,000 from the Treasurer's Department Purchase of Services Security Fire Control to the Treasurer's Department Personal Services <clears throat> Overtime. In order to cover the expected overtime costs for the remainder of the fiscal year, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer, Martin Murphy, <coughs> Treasurer, Tax Collector. And just so councils do know, Mr. Condon could not be here this evening. He had a long-standing um, uh, commitment on this particular date, so I think all of you may have received some information um, last week in regards to him not being here. And uh, uh, as we go along, for any, any area where he had to be present, we'll have uh, any uh, comment that he would have said. But anyhow, that's why he's not here this evening. Good evening, Mr. Brophy. Good evening, Councillors. Um, this is just a timing 
uh, our overtime. Actually, with snow days, we got hurt on actually having a staff in the building, and it hit us at a bad time. We had bills out there, and we've kind of gone through quite a bit of our overtime, so just need to move some money to cover the rest of the year. Favor, motion in favor of recommendation. Back in. Motion has been made and seconded sent <coughs> back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. 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 Brophy. Item number six, Madam Clerk. Order transfer of 15000 from the building department personal services other than overtime to building department overtime due to unexpected expenses for emergency calls during the evenings and weekends due to aging city buildings along with severe winter weather and emergency calls from fire police and for other, after our inspectional services invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer James Cassieri, Superintendent. Good evening, Mr. Superintendent. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Councilors? Good. Thank you. Um, this is because I'm getting close to the end of the overtime I have available, and we use quite a bit more than expected this winter, obvious reasons, so I'm asking a favorable recommendation. Motion, Motion. to approve. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, Madam Clerk. Order transfer 95000 from the parking meter reserves fees to the Parking Authority Ordinary Maintenance Services in order to fund a comprehensive parking study for the downtown area. The study is needed to access the need for additional parking to accommodate planned development and to arrive at a comprehensive parking management plan to develop the parking required. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Coffin, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert Malley, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. Malley. How are you? Good evening, Councilors. You're on. Uh, yeah. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, in addition to what it says right there, uh, we had originally uh, expected to get a grant to pay for this. And uh, in conjunction with Rob May at the parking, I mean, at the planning office, uh, we did submit a, a uh, grant application. However, uh, at the last minute, after the applications were accepted, the governor cut all the funding for this. So my board decided that it's necessary at this time to get going on this. So uh, they agreed to uh, pay for it at, at, with uh, a transfer, obviously, <coughs> with your permission. Mr. Chairman. Council uh, Dubois. Um, I, in my new capacity as state representative, I've been attending some of the downtown Brockton uh, college development discussions. In the very first one I, I attended, I thought they were looking into doing a parking study for the downtown. No, we were looking to do it. A parking study is, and we had uh, actually told the. Uh, that isn't. I think that was a concurrent thing. I was <clears throat> just so I can be clear what you're talking about. As I understood it, you may have been planning on doing a parking study for a very long time, and I know that you have, yes. and I think you do a great job. But I thought when I was there, and I'm pretty sure of it, that the the university coalition was also going to be looking into a parking study. No, that's not. They they were expecting ours. So right. when they were talking about we, the parking <clears throat> that you wanted to be around the downtown and not in the middle of the downtown and possibly changing the ang the the um, the from horizontal changing the direction of the parking garage by the high by the high, um, downtown yeah, are, city hall those were all things they were expecting you to do no no those are extremely long term plans after the first phase of the. Uh, of the college collaborative development, right, um, for room for expansion of the college campus. So area. that isn't what they, they, what they explained, as I remembered, is that they don't mind people having to walk. So they didn't mind having the parking like up at the mall where the parking is um, around what the um, object is, which is the downtown in this discussion. So I guess my question is, is this parking study going to come back and say that we should have a parking garage where the, um, where the park is up by Irving's paint store? Is, is that still an option? Because I'm totally against any study that's going to um, call to get rid of a park and put it in a parking garage. Is that what's going to happen? Do you well, know? I, are you looking into that? Well, I can't tell you where we, you know, what but, we would. Um, but you can what, tell what me what you're considering. But when you talk to the, when you hire someone to do a study for you, you yes. sit down with them and you tell them what you think you would like and what you think you wouldn't like. Um, can you tell me what you're going to tell the people that you hire about what you think is the goal for the downtown parking before we agree to spend ninety-five thousand dollars on it? Sure. Yeah. Well, 
there's there's more development than just the collaborative to begin with. You right. Have, uh, you know, the Kresge building they're looking at obviously, uh, 19 Main Street. Uh, there's been a rapid expansion at the neighborhood health center. Um, we have uh, the DUA has added people. WB Masons is planning an expansion, right? And right now we have a basically a, a short waiting list for all day parking. Right, so what we would like to do is maximize what we already have first. That would be the first step. Right? What do you any, mean by that? Well, any plans according, like by pricing, by uh, <coughs> signage, by uh, reassignment, anything along those lines that we could um, spread the parking a little bit out of the areas that where it's really congested to areas where people would have to go a little bit further to work, to, you know, to walk to work, right, would be the first thing, to maximize what we have. Right, and then assess what we're going to need with all the development. There's also 300 and something thousand square feet of vacant office space in the downtown that I'm sure we would like to fill. Yeah, but I don't uh, want to spend money on a parking garage for empty uh, warehouse space. That's for sure. It's empty now, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the places are and the spaces are filled at this point. What about okay? So, are you going to talk to the person about putting a garage up on where there's a park right now? Is that is that one of the options you're going to be discussing? I haven't even begun to think of where the locations would okay, be. Okay, okay. And is there any talk about making that, um, the parking garage that's right next to City Hall that's now one, one lot, is there any talk of putting a parking, multiple layer parking garage on but, that? But the Lincoln Street. I don't know what, I don't know that what you call it. On the opposite side of the chamber building? Across the street. Yeah, okay, yes. Well, that obviously would be one of the sites we would look at. Okay, I'm, I'm so adamantly against that because that will more or less block the best building that's in the downtown, which is City Hall. So I think that, I mean, not only as a citizen would I rally the troops to be against putting a multi-tiered parking garage blocking the best city, the best building in downtown. Um, I want you to know that I'm really nervous about Give, you know, approving $95,000 for a study, and the only two parking um, ideas that I've heard from anybody to date is one, getting rid of a park so we can put a major parking garage there, and then two, blocking Brockton City Hall by a big parking garage. When I know people that are downtown that don't mind walking a little bit, I think there's plenty parking right now. That's my opinion. I don't mind walking. I walk to the bus. I walk to the train. That's what downtowns are supposed to be there for. Um, so I just want to make a public statement that if anybody at home is also concerned Concerned about that kind of parking garage that they should start paying attention because it would be awful if they woke up one day and there was a garage out there. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Council Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Malley. How are you? Good evening. First question: When was the last study done? Yeah, uh, it's well before I was here. Before you were. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's got to be 15 years. Oh, okay. Now you're asking for ninety-five thousand dollars. How much is it actually going to cost us? I'm guessing it's going to cost very close to that. Close to one hundred thousand for the study. Yes. Okay. Now, a question. That, that price I got when I called around to potential vendors, people that I I believe are going to bid uh, when this goes out, right? In order to get a ballpark figure of what the what it would cost, judging by the scope of work. Have you have you sp uh, sp uh, spoken to uh, the assessor and uh, Mr. Brophy on uh, some of the empty buildings that we have downtown that are probably in uh, old back taxes that we can uh, take for eminent domain and knock them down and have a parking lot? I'm sure there has to be a, a few of the few of the buildings around that uh, you know they've been empty for years. Yeah, well, I understand uh, what you're driving at there because that's how. We got to the situation that we're in now by taking down buildings and building parking lots. Um, but what we've, what we've ended up with is a giant sprawl, right? The, the actual land use in the downtown <coughs> is, is so much is taken up by, by parking, right? That we really need to start thinking about structured parking. We need to think about building up, right, so that we can create some density downtown. Uh, we're using all the land for parking cars. Yeah, you know, it's great to build a parking garage, but you know, if you do put a, a parking garage like across the street, the people that park across the street have to find another home because you can't put a building up and work on top of automobiles. But, yeah, you need, need to relocate temporarily for that, yes. That's, okay. Uh, that's what happened with the Trinity Project. No, so as soon as you're available, when will this go out? 
Well, the RFP, assuming that we get the money, the RFP is ready to go now. Uh, so at any, you know, any time after that, and then we would have uh, the RFP requires for the vendor to start the work within 30 days. Okay. Probably six months for study. You're studying, you know, occupancy, uh, length of stay, uh, usage, uh, et cetera. And then it also calls for GIS mapping of all public and private uh, space available downtown. And you, you, you and I also, also uh, said that this would include parking meter parking for downtown this study also well it would yeah it would assess, include assess it. the need assess the need for that yes no no, no never mind assess the, it, it is a, there's not, a need for it i know that counselor you, you and i probably both know that let's let's see what the study says coming back before I, 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 before I we like make that plans, included before we decide what the sites are before we decide what uh technology is needed what what exactly needs to be done let's see what the data that. says let's see what the uh you know what the study says and the recommendations that they get, then it would go, and there will be, you know, public input into this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Councilor Sullivan. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Malley, good evening. Good evening. Uh, just to kind of follow up on my colleague, uh, you, you said that, because I think 95 grand is a lot of money, but you said you called around to a few to get a guesstimate. Yes. <clears throat> How many did you call? Three. And so this is a cost breakdown, an estimate? Yes. Relative to an yeah. average of we what they told you? We had to do that you. when we put the grant application in. <clears throat> yeah. They wanted to know exactly how much money we were going to need. So I had to call around and get prices for that. So when you put the RFP out, do you think when you call those those businesses, are any of them local Brockton businesses, or is it more? There, are, there is not a Brockton business that, that is, does that the is scope of work. No. But the, the, you know, they're Massachusetts businesses. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Councilor Moynihan. Yes. Sir. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Good evening. So all we're going to do is a study. There's not anything in stone. There's not, you don't have to get worried about anything. Exactly. It's just a study. We're going to see what it is. We'll get a public input. Nothing's going to be done without. Without, uh, yeah, without public input right. and without so discussing it. Exactly, first, exactly. And just, um, just another, has, have, have the, we looked into that parcel B on Warren Ave as far as that was part of the project when they put in the. Uh, when the courthouse went out. Yeah, is that going to be part of this? I mean, would I'm, they be looking at something like that? Every piece of land okay. in downtown will be part of the study. Right? Every, everything, public and private. All right. Where we could, you know, well, I it think would we need, be an I option. think we need this, and I'll be voting in favor of this. So thank you, Mr. Malley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Council. Any other Motion questions? Motion to recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Malley. Uh, item number eight. Order, transfer of 165000 from the parking meter reserve fees to the Parking Authority snow removal in order to cover the shortfall in fiscal 2015 plowing, sanding, and removal of snow for the Parking Authority. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert Malley, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Nice Good to evening. see you again. <laughs> it was kind of a long winter. <laughs> uh, this uh, figure includes through, through the month of February. We'll have a very small amount left over in March. We just received the bills yesterday. It's another maybe $17,000, but this was put in before that. We spent more money this year removing snow than we have plowing, sanding, and removing in mm. previous years. Motion recommend favor. Second. 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 On the motion. On the motion. <coughs> Council Stewart. A little, bit of, a little bit of latitude, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Chairperson, Mr. Malley. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, going back to the previous issue around the parking study, so will it um, also lay out uh, the... I can't do that. Well, you run snow. I asked for a little latitude here from the chair. I, I he said, said yes. Have a little, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so to Thank that you. One, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, will the study also include the cost of maintenance over years to keep yes. those? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It, and does it also in, will it also include um, sort of the the cost structure to ensure that at least the the cost of developing those sites break even or make money? It, so it has a financial yes. analysis yes. to it. Yes. We will. Yeah. It's, um, it, in fact, if you would like, I can send you a, uh, a scope of work. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. You're welcome, Councilor. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Malley, what was that total amount? You said it's the most ever. What was the total amount? Uh, well, Excluding one, that 17 grand. 165.22 is uh, 187, and 17 will be uh, 197. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Malley, how are you? Good. How are you? I just want to, I just have a quick question for you. Um, what is the balance on the, uh, on the parking meter? On reserve? the reserve account? I looked at that this morning. Between the two reserve accounts that we have is uh, $1.15 million.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mill. You're welcome. Councilors, we had a motion. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. We already did. Uh, motion to be made and second to uh, send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maley. Item number 10, Madam Clerk. Order a transfer of 25000 from personnel <coughs> department to personal services employee benefits to the law department purchase <coughs> services for purposes of paying costs to the city in connection with the special election. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John McGeary, Executive <coughs> Director, and Philip <coughs> Nazarella, City Solicitor. Mr. Nazarella. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. <coughs> and any questions for Attorney Nazarella in regards to this particular item here? Motion recommend favorably. Second. Motion's been made and second to send back to the full city On council. On the motion. On the motion, Council <coughs> Sullivan. Good evening, Attorney Nazarella. Good evening. <coughs> Relative to this, uh, could you just explain, Phil, exactly what paying costs in connection with the special election would be? So the primary cost for that will be to engage the uh, counsel and advice of our outside law firm, Mince Levin, to frame the questions in draft the, um, the document that will be submitted to the voters by which the voters will read and, and make their determination and vote based upon that framework. So the actual ballot language. That is correct. Do we, uh, I know the uh, the proponent, the casino rush gaming, they're paying for a lot of, we, is this a potential reimbursable expense? Yes, it is. It is. Yes, but according to the DOR standards, we have to pay first before we get reimbursement. So regardless of how the election, get the money we'll, we'll still get our money back regardless. That is correct. Okay, thank you, attorney. Thank you're you. You're welcome, Counselor. Any other questions? Counselor Dubois. Thank you, Attorney Nessarella. Thanks for being here. So will the City Council have any input on the, will we see any of the wording, the drafts, or anything like that? I do not believe so. I think that's got to be according to the state statute in language that is intertwined with, with the, with the um, um, statutory framework for making a ballot. Doesn't the state statute, and you tell me because you've read it more times than I have, does it talk about location? You have to describe where it's going to be located? It doesn't it say something like that, uh, that, the, that the question has to talk about where the, where the casino is going to be located? I have not examined it in that, in that framework, if, whether or not that has to be on the ballot. Then what do you think has to be on the ballot? I don't like to guess. I mean, I'm not trying to I be a I assumed that you I, would have read I, it already. I, I don't I mean, know. you know. No. Well, that's sad. I mean, I'll be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'll be happy to Welcome respond counsel. and get back to you, but I don't want to guess. Okay. Point of information, Council Sullivan. if I could, to the council, uh, I've dealt with this in another community uh, when the, uh, in this case, the city solicitor drafts it. You do need uh, election law experts to make sure the Secretary of State will verify the verbiage as such. So uh, I do agree with the councilor. The standard is that it needs to be informative so that the average voter will read the language and not have any ambiguity. So uh, that's, that's how the Secretary of State is going to look at it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. councilor. Do I have a motion? We had we made, Did we have one? I'm yeah. sorry. The motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council in favor of recommendation. Good evening, Councilor Barnes. We did, we did hear you tiptoe in. Good evening, Councilor. Sorry. Next item, uh, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 150000 from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, EOPS Highway Safety Division, Fiscal Year 2015 Traffic Enforcement Grant. To the City of Brockton Police Department, EOPS Fiscal 15 Traffic Enforcement Grant. Grant funds in the amount of 149000 will be used to pay for the police overtime to conduct high visibility traffic enforcement of intersections with high volume of accidents and injuries during peak hours, and 1000 is to be used for overtime for data entry purposes. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief, Robert DeBarry, Captain Traffic Commission. Good evening, Captain. How are you? Good evening. Uh, Chief Crowley is not available today. Very good. I don't think I've ever uh, this, seen This it. grant is for, uh, tr like it says, traffic enforcement. We hope to target some of those areas where we've had those pedestrian accidents. Uh, we're also going to be targeting bicycle safety. And uh, that's about all I have to add. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. <coughs> is this a Council grant that we've had in, in past years or is this new? We've had it in past years, but not in this amount. I think this is about double what we usually get. We usually get. Okay. And we, you plan on targeting particularly where we've had the pedestrian accidents? <coughs> pedestrian accidents uh, and also uh, some of the most hazardous intersections that we do have. 
So we are going to use this, though, for enf enforcement, not as much education and all this. Is, we've done some of that, I know, already. This is to get the guys out. Yeah, this will be primarily officers out on the road doing traffic stops. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're Good welcome. evening, Captain. Good evening. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, the 149,000, will that go beyond uh, June 30th into uh, the 16 budget? Uh, I, be <clears throat> I believe it goes till October. Oh, through October? I believe okay, that's so, right, yes. Which is, okay, which is uh, during the summer into the fall. That's correct. Okay, great, great. Thank you very much, Captain. Thank you, Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Mons. Uh, yes, Captain. <clears throat> is this a result of um, the traffic study that happened on Belmont Street with OCPC? Any of this new, I guess? No, this is a, uh, it's, uh, it's like a recurring grant that we've been getting the last oh, okay. few years. Um, it's usually not in this amount. I don't know if the Belmont, Belmont Street thing have anything to do with it. Yes, I guess it is part of that. It's incorporated. Sorry. Okay. And, and so that'll be used in some of the enforcement in that area? That's okay, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Motion Councilor. to approve. Second. On the motion. <clears throat> On the motion. Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, Captain. Yes, sir. Just a quick question for you. I mean, I sit on the, uh, on the traffic commission, and yes, the question. lately we've had all kinds of... Um, requests coming in front of the uh, of the commission looking for funding for a variety of apparatus and instruments to help us uh, deal with traffic issues in the city will any of this fund be used for um, for traffic signage um, I, I don't believe it will be I, I think it's pretty specific to mostly overtime to put offices out doing traffic stops so there's absolutely nothing in terms of uh, additional funding that can actually go into Putting additional signs, speed signs in the city, and some of the other things. Not, not with this grant, not to my knowledge. What about any of the other grants as we go down the list? Is there anything in there uh, for tra traffic equipment? Um, no, I have five items here. I don't think the other ones are for traffic equipment. It's something we'd have to find somewhere else. No, because it's actually a, a, a serious concern because. Uh, you know, we've had issues, I mean, we talk about, you know, the, um, the traffic issues that we've had in terms of uh, pedestrian accidents and things like that in the community, but at the same time, every time any fund seems to have come to the city, it goes into overtime and not necessarily to, ta to deal with some of the infrastructure issues that we've had in the community. That's why I'm bringing that up. Good evening, Councillor. In response to your question, we are actually in the process of obtaining a separate grant, not reflected in any of these tonight, as a direct result uh, of the work that occurred last fall in, in uh, response to some of the terrible tragedies that we had here in the city. Uh, we were able to get a, through Mass Dot a late amendment that provided roughly a half a million dollar grant to the city specifically for what you're talking about pedestrian safety infrastructure improvements, which would be things like signage, crosswalks, uh, lights that, the, the signs that tell you how fast you're driving. Uh, there's a whole long list of things that may be eligible. Now, we're working closely with MassDOT on that. They are very involved with their engineers and their consultants, so it's kind of a partnership with them. They're bringing the money. Uh, so. What has occurred up to this point, and Captain DeBarry is part of our task force working on this, uh, they've analyzed the pedestrian and bicycle crash data for the past three years. They've identified three very specific areas that are the highest crash areas involving pedestrians or bicycles, and this money is going to have to be spent within those three, let's call high risk areas. And so we're at the point in the process right now at the next meeting, the outside consultant engineers being paid by the state will be making specific recommendations and with price tags on there. So you will see those coming during the course of this year with some state grant money that was not originally intended for us that working closely with MassDOT, they were able to identify and approve uh, to get some additional help to Brockton in light of some of the pedestrian fatalities. So 
at the next meeting of the task force, uh, they will be identifying exactly where we spend the money for, for what items, but all along the ideas of what you're describing. Uh, pedestrian safety uh, infrastructure, flashing lights, uh, crosswalks, uh, the things of that sort. Uh, thank you, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, so uh, Council, Council DiNapoli, did you have a follow-up or something? I, I just wanted to, uh, Lieutenant Williamson, it, I'm, I'm, Lieutenant, I'm sorry, Captain. Captain uh, DeBrowley, can you come up and uh, just one question, Could, because you're the uh, commissioner, traffic commissioner. And you're working on your 2016 budget now, correct? Correct. Because I, I sat on traffic commission for many, many years. Um, now, that's great news that the mayor just told us that they're looking for grant money, which will definitely help your department. But I, let me ask you a question. It's what you submit into the mayor's office, and then the mayor makes recommendations what you get out of the traffic commission. Are you, are you trying to quote unquote look for more money in your budget this year yes we are okay very good that's all i want to know thank you very much captain thank you you're welcome council <clears throat> and just to follow up to that because i sat on the traffic commission last year so when i have a meeting tomorrow with with the mayor um you might as well hear it now it's on my list and he and i have already discussed that that we need to put more money into the budget until some of these things can happen and he's he's well aware of that because that was a commitment that i made back uh as being a member of the traffic commission for everything that's going on and for even for what we've gone through this winter we need to keep up with things so uh you know that's not falling on deaf ears either council thank you mr thank chair you. good thank news. you uh, thank you captain thank you. Uh, as well we had a motion on the uh, floor to send motion it back. To favor. motion to recommend favorably Second. 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 all in favor opposed goes back to the full city council with favorable <coughs> recommendation we have item number 12 madam clerk appropriation of forty one thousand six eighty four in 21 cents from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security EOPS year seven of the local action research grant to the city of Brockton Police Department EOPS fiscal year 15 local action research grant fund. The purpose of this grant is to hire outside contractor assistants to evaluate the work being done with Shannon grant funds, reducing youth and gang violence. No grant match is required. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief <coughs> Financial Officer, and John Crowley, Police Chief. Captain, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, this money is, uh, we accept funding from Shannon, the Shannon grant. Part of the requirement is that we do this uh, research on these, these uh, Shannon uh, funds for the reducing youth and gang violence. They Move to approve. Second. 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 Motion. motion was made and second on the motion. Councilor Bonds. Would this be considered an audit of the program or how the funding is it's, um <laughs> It's research. It's, it's, uh, they, they tracked the, the they, they do like, it's like it's a form of crime mapping, uh, and they target the, the top, uh, I guess you'd say, gang offenders. That's good doing. And it's a, it's a requirement of a grant that we accept from them. <coughs> and it's money that we usually pay Kelly Research to do this for us. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's, that's what I was asking. Is this research considered an audit of the program and the effectiveness um, of it? I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if audit is the right word. Uh, um, it's just a check in? Okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's research on, 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 on the program and, and the effects of what we're doing. I, I don't know if that's considered an audit. I don't think that's an audit. But. Okay. okay. Thank you, Captain. Motion was made and seconded to approve. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Madam uh, Clerk, number 13. Order appropriation of 130399 from the U.S. Department of Justice Justice Assistance Grant to the City of Rockton Police Department Justice Assistant Grant Fund. These funds will be used to hire for research and evaluation services, hire, hire social services to assist in co-responding to family violence calls with the Brockton Police and Clergy police equipment, travel and training costs, overtime for police and grant fiscal management services. Okay. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, and John Crowley, Police Chief. Good evening, Captain. Good, good evening. Uh, as it was explained, a lot of this money goes to social work, so pay social workers to follow up on the domestic violence calls that we go on. Uh, Motion there is to some approve. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve. <clears throat> All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council, favorable recommendation. Madam Clerk, number 14. Order appropriation of 162974 
dollars and sixty two cents from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security State 911 Department <coughs> Training Grant and EMD Regulatory Compliance Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department State 911 Training Grant and EMD Regulatory Compliance Grant Fund. These funds will be used to reimburse overtime for ETD, police officers, and fire department EMD personnel, personnel to attend the mandatory 16 hours of emergency 9-11 certif certification trainings, as well as the cost to pay certified training vendors approved by the state 9-11 department. There is no grant match required. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, and John Kiley, Police Chief. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion for made and seconded to approve. All in favor? Close goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of three hundred fifteen thousand five hundred eighty-six from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State Nine One One Department, answering point and regional emergency communication center support and incentive security nine eleven department grant to the City of Brockton Police Department Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund. These funds will be used to backfill both ETD and police dis dispatcher wages incurred from uh, February 4th, 2015 to June 30th, 2015 for any associated overtime costs to replace that same personnel as well as funds to install a new dispatch console for the fire department dispatchers. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief, and Richard C. Francis, Fire Chief. Motion recommend favor, please. Second. second. On the motion. Motion's been made. <coughs> There's a second on the motion. Councilor DiNapoli. Uh, good evening, Captain. Good evening. The, uh, I, I guess the, uh, the last part of this is the uh, There'll be a new console installed uh, over at fire headquarters. Uh, That's correct. Uh, De Deputy Chief, good evening. Good evening, Councilors. This is money to uh, replace a 30-year-old console at the fire department that was installed prior to the use of computers. We've had to adjust and move that console around to make way for computers. This will bring us into a, a modern-style console that's staffed 24-7 by two fire department dispatchers. That's good, good news that we're getting some much-needed equipment, Deputy Chief. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> any, other, any other questions? There was a motion. Uh, motion and, recommend favorably. Second. second. Um, Sorry, all in fa there. Everyone ready? All yeah. in favor? Go for it. Opposed? <laughs> Goes Mr. back to the President. full city council with a favorable recommendation. Mad um, I was going to call you Madam Clerk. I'm sorry. Whatever. Councilor <laughs> Dubois. Thank you. I, at this time, the only um, other police matter is number 22. So, yes. so the captain doesn't stay. I'm going to move to move uh, take number 22 out of order. Second. Second. Motion's been made. And second, we take item number 22 out of order. All in favor? Opposed? We'll hear uh, number 22, Madam Clerk. Resolved that the mayor be requested to appropriate money for a study of the Brockton Police Department staffing <coughs> span of control and to provide recommendations for reducing supervisory positions within the department, increasing patrol officers. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. Mr. Chairperson. Council Stewart. Excellent. I actually filed this resolve, um, and um, it looks like the mayor is handing out some documentation. Um, right, thank you. Uh, my uh, principal concern and um, felt that maybe it was more important that yeah. the executive branch take a look at this is that in the city ordinances, we dictate the number of uh, captains, lieutenants, et cetera, that should be on the police force. And my concern has always been that um, it seems a bit as if the city council, through the ordinance, is micromanaging uh, the size and personnel of the police force. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily seem like the most appropriate uh, use of legislation, and that those decisions should be made um, within the police department itself. Uh, with that said, um, the, the thinking is that there should be perhaps some type of ratio of top brass to police officers so that the public understands because those positions are written in the ordinances. If we were to downsize the, the police department for budgetary reasons, um, because those, those numbers are in the ordinance, those positions could not be eliminated and we're, we'll be talking about uh, decreasing the size of the patrol staff um, while leaving a fairly bloated um, top end staff. So, um, so there are two issues. One, that it, it feels to me that we need to have the executive administrative uh, function determine the size of those positions or those, uh, those layers and then Secondly, because it's enshrined in the ordinance, it 
really takes away flexibility in terms of how the department manages uh, human capital. So this is a recommendation that there's a study done by the, the team to determine what is the best makeup of the police department. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Welcome, uh, Councilor. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Yes, so I think that uh, what you have in front of you, Councilor, is probably the first step in that type of study. Uh, Chief Crowley, uh, knowing that he couldn't be here tonight, uh, did provide this to me to provide, uh, to bring along to the Council. Uh, but what the police department has done uh, since the last time we discussed your resolve, Councillor, is they did a survey of six other cities here in the Commonwealth similar in size to Brockton and compiled the statistics to give an idea as to about how our police manpower looks to compare with some other cities. And for those who don't have a sheet, uh, the comparison was with Fall River, Lynn, Quincy, New Bedford, Cambridge, and Lowell. Um, and I think that uh, the number of supervisors seems to be pretty much in line with uh, the percentages in the other departments. If anything, with 40 supervisors, we're probably, in terms of the gross number, on the low side. Uh, but we're also on the low side with the total number of officers, period. I think the biggest thing that jumped it out at me out of this uh, survey was that Brockton with 187 funded total police positions, Fall River with 228, and New Bedford with 273. So I think for a couple cities from southeastern Massachusetts that would be pretty similar to Brockton, uh, their police manpower is significantly higher. So um, it, I think this shows that, uh, if anything, we're understaffed in terms of the police department. It's something we've talked about before. It's going to require a long-term game plan of trying to increase by a few positions each year. Uh, but uh, that was my takeaway. And certainly, Chief Crowley will make himself available, Counselor. But uh, because he's traveling out of state this evening, he wanted to make sure that we at least were able to furnish the information we put together since uh, the last time we discussed this at FinCon. I appreciate it. And I, I do know the resolve of Red, and I actually had requested that it be edited before the, it was presented, and it, the final version, unfortunately, didn't make it through. So it was a, a little bit less about saying that the department was top heavy, because uh, I really wasn't certain what the right ratio should right. be. Uh, I've, I've read a couple studies, and they've all varied around what those percentages should look like. I was more concerned that the city ordinances dictate very explicitly what those numbers look like, taking the control of managing staff from the police department and having it sit uh, here in, in this body. So, um, so whether or not we're in a line with other cities or towns at the moment doesn't necessarily mean that it'd be the right. case the way it's written. Your, your question is more with the, the mechanism. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if if, uh, if it makes sense for your team to kind of think about what's the best way to, to structure those that decision making process and if it should sit. Well, here in, in I mean, order. we could certainly work with the council to bring something forward, but ordinances are, is the is the council's domain, uh, not mine. But we would certainly be willing to work with the council if that's something you wanted to look at. I think also, and Chief Stadensky, you can help me with this, but I think any discussion of changing those numbers would require collective bargaining with the police supervisors union also. So there, there are several partners involved here if you're going to look at changing it. Great. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, just to, excuse me, be clear. <clears throat> On this form that we got from, uh, from you, Mr. Mayor, it says that we have 13 lieutenants and from the resolve that uh, Councilor Stewart wrote, it, reflects 12 lieutenants, so was that? It used to be 12 and it changed to 13 somewhere along the line. Before I became mayor, the, I believe the ordinance read 12 and the option for one more, and at some point the council did make the decision to add the 13th I think lieutenant. that was point of information. I think it was last year, the year before, yeah. when that was changed. That okay. pre yeah. predates me as mayor, but I kind of remember it. Oh, we're looking for a place to put council Okay, now. thank you. Thank oh, you, council. Councilor Dubois. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, where, where would um, Captain Gomes be? Where, where is he now? Where is he located? 
Is he at the park department or the dog pound? Where is he now? I don't, I don't believe <laughs> it's not, he's... It's not a joke. I'm just no, I, I, asking. Well, first of all, the chief runs the police department, not me. I don't micromanage any of the departments, including the police department. Would he be counted uh, in the six captains, though, even if he's not like doing captain He is work? absolutely okay. How about captain one of McCabe? the six captains. Still a captain. Could I ask the, could I ask the yeah. captain this? We have six captains. I would caution the council against getting too specific into individuals in a public hearing regarding their Thanks for cautioning me. Yep. Thank you. Captain, can you tell me where Manny, uh, Captain Gomes is right now? Where is he stationed? Captain Gomes is currently assigned to patrol division. What's patrol division? I thought he was uh, in the he, school police. He was. He's been, uh, I think it was effective uh, this weekend. He's now assigned to the day shift patrol division. day shift division. Yes. patrol. And would he be, do captains usually patrol or no? Or is that normal? He's a CEO. Of the, he's a commanding officer of the day shift. Okay, great. So is that a typical role for a captain? Uh, it, it's been done. It's not always done. Um, I was recently the commanding officer of the midnight shift. Great. Maybe sometimes it's a lieutenant. Sometimes it's a captain. Okay. And where's um, uh, Captain McCabe right now? He's he's in the down in the uh, dispatch area. He's in charge of the ETDs, the telephone operators. Okay. So he's not in the dog pound. Was he ever assigned to the dog pound? Uh, Wasn't that well, in the I, I believe they call it animal control. He was temporarily he was? assigned there uh, back in September. Uh, but now we figured that all out, and he's in a. I thought you didn't supervise the police department. No, counsel, I'm trying. Let me have the microphone for a second, please, counsel. I'm trying to advise because you're asking questions that would be appropriate of Chief Crowley. Then and you Chief should Crowley's have brought him. Here. Then you should have brought him. Chief Crowley Council. is on his on an earned vacation, yeah, traveling out good. of state. That's very nice. Counselor. Very nice. Seriously. Let's I get agree. on to Seriously. The last question you Please. asked relates to pending litigation, and so I was just going to. Uh, I'm not sure if. If, I don't uh, know about any pending litigation. Captain, and I don't think Captain Williamson yeah. did either, so that's why I wanted to make him aware of it. That's Glad all. that you know about it. Well, seeing as I'm a co-defendant, I hope I do know. That's enough. He answered like that's that. That's enough. He answered. Thank Slow you very down. much. I'm serious. I'm done. Let's be respectful to people here. Right, both ways. Anything else, Councilor? Nothing. Are we done? Point of information. Councilor Cruz. Just to let uh, my colleague know, that 13th lieutenant is, a, is pending as long as the school department pays for that 13th lieutenant and it's assigned to the school department. If they stop paying for it, that, that under the agreement with the union and in the ordinance, that 13th lieutenant goes away and goes back to 12. Correct. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Uh, a, qu a question, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Stewart. Oh. Yeah, um, a question for the mayor, actually. So uh, you mentioned that this is the first step in the process. Um, exactly what are you envisioning the next steps being? Well, you asked for a, I, I think you asked the chief for some longer term recommendations. Mm -hmm. So I think that <clears throat> he was trying to provide you with a survey of some data and comparison to get a handle on, I think to figure out where you're going, get a start off by figuring out where you're at. Right. And I think that was the purpose of this is to be a, a snapshot. But uh, again, you'd have to speak directly to Chief Crowley, who is uh, traveling out of state this evening. Okay, so if, uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Maybe I can have this, um, I forget what the, the exact term, not postponed, but uh, moved to um, a future finance committee, I'd say. At some point in, in uh, May, brought yeah, back at I the think finance May. meeting in yeah. May, the first, the, the second? Uh, the second, it matter? May. Second. Okay, so we're gonna postpone it until um, the Correct. second finance meeting in May. Yes. Do I have a second on that? Second. second. All in favor? Opposed, and we'll have it uh, again. Madam Clerk, you got that down as well. So it'll be the second finance meeting in May. <clears throat> we'll go back to the agenda, which we should be on item number, I believe. Uh, 17. 17. Order that in accordance with chapter 23, <clears throat> section 30, F6 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, the City Council approves the Brockton Water Commission recommended a 30% increase, a 15% water rate increase effective July 1st, 2015, and another 15% increase effective July 1st, 2016. The increase will address the current needs of the Water Division, including but not limited to capital projects, EPA, DEP mandates, and Aquaria contract services, as well as personal services. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Finance. 
Financial Officer, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, Ozzy Jordan, Chairman of Water Commission. Council, yes, Mr. Here. Chairman, uh, I'd like to make a motion to po postpone this to the next finance meeting. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. We postpone <coughs> this to the next uh, finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? We'll hear it at, at our next meeting. Thank you, uh, Council. Madam Clerk, number 18. Order that the City Council rescind Order 76 as adopted by the Council on March 9, 2015, for the purpose of accepting and expending a 339,040-hour smart growth incentive dividend for various planning purposes. Accordingly, requesting that the City Council establish a revolving fund for <coughs> the intended purpose in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Robert May, Planning Director. Good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, Mr. President. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I just wanted to point out that item number 18 and 19 are interconnected with each other. Uh, the last time I was here before the um, uh, City Council, <coughs> we had asked and uh, Council approved the reinvestment of uh, 40R Smart Growth Funds into uh, additional planning activities uh, that were going to be a, the citywide comprehensive plan, a downtown uh, master plan, and uh, the uh, uh, project, a, a master plan for the Campello district. Uh, unfortunately, we um, uh, didn't follow the, the correct letter of, of the financial responsibilities of where uh, this should be um, uh, placed. Uh, we can't add money to a budget once the tax um, levy has been passed, and so um, uh, Mr. Condon suggested that we establish a revolving fund that these monies be put into, which will allow us to spend them this year and not have to wait a, uh, two and a half years under the uh, free cash rule. Questions, uh, Councilor Sullivan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, sir. Mr. May, if we could just wind it back a little bit to that night when we approved this. I had asked, and uh, this was before you started working here, but I had asked both you and Mr. Kahn and to please do some homework to find out the funds that the city of Brockton has already been paid from the Commonwealth due to the acceptance five or six years ago, Chapter 40R. Um, to date, we haven't received that. I know the President had requested it again. Do we have those numbers? Um, I do have some information. I don't have exact numbers on, in categories. I've been working with Jay and with Heidi in his office. Um, we know that some of the money went to um, uh, fund uh, the state, or the city's match to the uh, Mass Works grants to rebuild and relight the uh, uh, four downtown viaducts. Uh, also, some streetscape work on center or excuse me, on commercial. Uh, and then some of the funds, um, I'm told, were used to make emergency repairs at um, Campanelli Stadium after a, uh, a, a lightning strike and large storm. Do we know what the dollar amount is? I don't know the dollar amount. I'm still working with the um, uh, treasurer's office to, to get exact amounts. Uh, a large portion of it was transferred through the B, to the BRA to do that work. And we're, we're <coughs> having to pull those records right now from BRA to get that information. So let me, let me, understand, let me understand this. The Commonwealth paid the city of Brockton through the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Hmm. Correct. Okay. But we don't know how much it was paid. We know where it was paid and allocated to use, right, like you just explained. Yes. But we don't know how much we were actually paid. We, we have an idea of how much we were paid, and I'm sorry I didn't write that down because I'm still working on the report. Um, what we got paid is, is, is a known, how we spent it is, is, an un, is not clear at this point. I don't understand that though. I, don't, I, I guess I don't understand that. If the city of Brockton got paid money by the Commonwealth, why can't we find out what that dollar amount is? And this isn't to you because this was under Nancy Stack Savoy, the other planner, but it should be simple accounting. I mean, it's got to be in a ledger. It's got to be in accounts receivable. It's got to be somewhere. So It, it should be, and, and we just need to do some more research at... Um, at the um, at the finance office, but we will have a, an answer for you. Okay, I'd like that answer respectfully before we take a final vote on this. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank Chair. You, uh, Thank Councilor. you, Councilor. <laughs> Councilor Barnes. Right. Um, would this be in reference to uh, the oh, information you brought last time too about the Brockton Something Something Foundation? Uh, no, no. This is this is about. Um, 
a 40 hour smart growth payment that the state made to us because of the Trinity project. Okay. And uh, smart growth is a, a, a 40 hour zoning uh, overlay district in downtown. And we were asking that this money be reinvested in very specific projects, including a citywide comprehensive plan, right. uh, downtown master plan, and a Campello uh, district master plan. But with the money now having to go to a different place than what was originally thought, does that, found, does that newly created foundation have anything to do with that? No, not at all. It will go into a revolving fund that is underneath my department, like other like the revolving funds that are under the health department or the um, uh, building department. Okay, so... It's a specific grant fund, basically, that allows us to spend that money on these projects. Okay, so I, I guess to, just to for my own clarification on what Councilor Sullivan said, so the money that we already got is somewhere and has been allocated for some things. So with this <laughs> new account, this new revolving account, would that money be located and put in there and this new money? Uh, those funds have already been allocated and expended uh, to the best of our knowledge. So it's all gone? Those, those previous funds are, are gone, yes. These are new funds that we're talking about. Okay, so I guess... And I'm by having a work. specific account that we're putting it into, we will be able to track it better. In the past, those funds were accepted by the city and went into the mayor's office previously um, or other departments. I, I, I do not know how those funds were spent, I'm sorry. Okay. Some of it was transferred to BRA, some of it was done by Nancy Stack as the city planner, but those aren't, um, that's not information I have right now and I'm still trying to work with the uh, finance department to get that information. Oh, okay, and I, I know you say you're still trying to work on it, and I'm not trying to beat you up, but there's no, uh, th there was no kind of check and balance with the state on how we spent the money that they gave us? That's not available? There's no report Even to the- Even at first glance. Just there's no report to the state on how we spend the money, no. That wasn't a requirement. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. You're Mayor. welcome, uh, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna make a motion to postpone this agenda item until we get that information. I don't Second. think there's a dire urgency to take a final vote on this or to fa pass it favorably back to the full council. I, I would suspect that this body will do that. But as you know, we asked for a month ago, and not to put this on Mr. May, but a month's a long time. And as you guys recall, two guys and gals recall two weeks ago, we asked the chairman to do a follow-up, and he did do a follow-up. So I'm gonna make a motion to postpone this to the next FinCom. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded that we're gonna postpone on this item to the next uh, finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? So we're going to postpone <coughs> this to the next uh, next meeting. Madam Clerk, the next item. 19, order that pursuant to the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, the City Council authorizes the establishment of a 40-hour smart grant and sent a revolving fund for said receipts from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts <coughs> for purposes of engaging professional consulting services to prepare a citywide comprehensive plan Downtown Redevelopment Plan, Downtown District oh, Improvement Plan, Campello District Re Redevelopment Plan, and to help fund the management by the Brockton Redevelopment Authority of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Home Program. Expenditure from the revolving fund shall be under the direction of the Department of Planning and Economic Development and shall be limited to 350000 in fiscal year 15. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert May, Planning Director. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Oh, Councilor Sullivan. Just like the uh, the previous agenda, I'm gonna respectfully ask for postponement until next FinCom. Very good. Very good. Very good. Motion's been made and seconded that we postpone this item to the next uh, finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Madam Clerk, you have that down, so we'll do this at the next meeting as well. Yes, I do. And we're going on to item number 20. Order that the City Council Attorney is directed to explore and implement any and all legal strategies and filings to maintain and uphold the City Charter and City Ordinances as it relate to the affluent contract the Mayor signed with out Council Order Approval. Invited Mark Gilday, Legislative Council. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to my colleagues, uh, as we know that uh, our outside council is working on a certain uh, legal issue relative to, uh, to the intent of this. I have spoken to Legislative Council uh, Attorney Gilday. I think it would be appropriate uh, in, in line to uh, ask for postponement until the next uh, regular scheduled Senate call. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. We take this item and postpone it to the next finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Same, uh, Madam Clerk, goes to, to the next uh, finance meeting in April. 
Uh, item number 21. Resolved that the mayor, chief of police, chief financial officer in the city's building superintendent come before finance committee to discuss the position of code enforcement office in conjunction with the police department and provide the <coughs> committee with an update when this vital position will be reinstated and operational on a daily basis. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, Councilors, I have also signed on with this particular item as well for uh, having concerns with the uh, position. And I just want to remind, uh, as we speak uh, this evening, I want to keep it to the position and not persons. We need to stay away from uh, personnel issues or we're going to find ourselves in uh, a, a tough situation. So, uh, but I do have a, a concern uh, with the code enforcement position. So good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Mr. President, I guess. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. As you know, you were, at a, uh, you were unable to attend the last one, but the, uh, the chief was here. And quite honestly, uh, I somewhat felt bad for him because he, uh, he wasn't the chief when uh, a certain representation was made to this party. And as you recall, Mr. Mayor, uh, former Chief Hayden and yourself uh, both stood up at the podium and you both opined to the fact that if this body agreed to overtime uh, that the position would be filled the quote was next day tomorrow uh, that didn't happen and the question was uh, why was that not why didn't that happen sure so we've got a couple things as you said uh, that have occurred uh, we've had a change did I lose my mic yeah? okay. no, just uh, we've had a change in chief in the few months in between so we're dealing with two chiefs now. Um, specifically regarding appointing or reassigning an officer to be a full-time code enforcement officer uh, brings us into a personnel matter uh, that uh, I can't discuss in an open public meeting. Let me, let me just finish, because you, you were a town council. Uh, the, try to ch choose my words carefully here. Uh, We can talk about the function. He made the commitment to the function, not to a specific individual. That's correct, but it wasn't yep. just he. It was you as well. And I the fact that Hayden left, supported. it was a long time after the fact that you made a representation. It would be tomorrow. Right. That was in the representation, I think, was in late November. Uh, I think the chief chose to wait until the council took its final vote at the next council meeting to make sure the money was definitely appropriated. And then... There was personnel action taken that week uh, in order to fulfill that commitment. A personnel issue was raised, and I can't talk about it in a public meeting. And I can appreciate that. We're not talking I'll about I'll be happy to talk about what we're doing now, where we're no, going. No, I want to talk I, about I then, quite that, honestly, uh, because, again, Chief we, Condon, we, we, I mean, we Chief were Crowley, promised uh, certain things, right? We were promised that there would be uh, police officers back to the housing authority, the motorcycle officers would be back on the road, and code enforcement would be tomorrow. And two of those three things happened. And the third thing didn't happen, and it should have happened. And we can talk about, we won't talk about the individual that was in that job, although I think he did a good job in that job. Um, I guess it's easy to say there's a change in chief. And Mr. Crowley said to me last week or two weeks ago, ask Hayden. Well, I can't ask Hayden. He's down in Hingham. I, I, I'm just asking you, because you made the promise to us as well. Why didn't that happen? I just explained to you that oh, you there didn't. was, I yes, I did. That. A personnel issue arose, has arisen. What does that it's mean? Pending. Personnel issue arose. Everything is secret. What does that mean? I, if you want to vote to go into executive session, I'll talk about it. I can't talk about it in a public meeting. Make a motion. The commitment, let me try to say this to you, Councillor. Make a motion to go to executive session. Second. Second. Motion's been made and second. Take a roll call vote on that, please. Exactly. Motion's been made and seconded that we go into an executive <coughs> session. Mr. Chairman, uh, La Cruz. I, I believe I'd like uh, Mr. Gilday to come up. I don't believe we can on this without informing. I, could Mr. Gilday the come attorney, up? And attorney, he's right here. He's coming right up and he can. <coughs> I'm interested. So the chair, the, the question? Uh, my question is, I mean, uh, I don't even know if, what we're going into executive session for, and will we be allowed to discuss? Uh, could you fill me in on what we're allowed without prior warning to go into executive session on? It might be easier if we took a brief recess and I can speak with the mayor and understand what the issue is and then advise let's, the council. Let, let, and let's do that. We're going to take a five minute recess.
<coughs> Finance committee meeting is back in session. Attorney Gilday. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, I had the opportunity to briefly review the matter with the city solicitor and discuss briefly what possibly could be discussed in executive session. And there's no question that there are certain exemptions to the open meeting law that would allow you to go into exec executive session. However, the one exception that you would use in this case would require other notice to be provided to individuals. So it would be my recommendation at this time you do not vote to go into executive session. Councilors, Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Attorney G Gilday. Uh, Councilor, I'm going to make a motion to postpone this item until the next FENCOM meeting. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded that we postpone this item to the next uh, finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? That item has been postponed to the next uh, finance meeting. Um, and I believe, I believe we're done. Is that correct? That's, yes. good. That's correct. Out of order a few times. Councilor, is that Councilor Cruz? Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of points I wanted to... Uh, uh, first off, uh, well, Thursday night there are two important events in the city. Uh, I just want to uh, congratulate Award 1 uh, constituent and a good friend, Tom Pulaski, has been voted the uh, 2015 yeah, Distinguished yeah. Alumni Award recipient, recipient by the Brockton Alumni Association. And in fact, he'll be honored uh, Thursday night at the uh, Brockton High School Spring Concert. And I want to thank him and tell people they can go and... Uh, and congratulate uh, Tom that night. Thanks. And uh, he's been a, a great Brocktonian, uh, former uh, baseball coach, former uh, athletic director, and a, and a great Brocktonian. And then also I want to remind everybody that Thursday evening I'll be hosting, co-hosting with Councilor Monahan and yourself, and on behalf of all the councils, I hope they'll come at West Middle School at 7 o'clock, an informational meeting on the, uh, on the proposed casino. And uh, there'll be a presentation at the beginning by the... Uh, the Rush Gaming Group, so the public can come and see what they're proposing, and then there will be question and answers uh, so that the people can get whatever information, whatever questions they have. Uh, the mayor and his staff will be there to answer questions about the, uh, the city uh, agreement that they've signed, and uh, again, the public's welcome, and obviously, I know most of you councilors will be there, and that's Thank at you. 7 o'clock at the West Middle School. Thank you, Councilor Thank you. Cruz. Again, that's Thursday, this Thursday evening, 7 o'clock p.m. at yes. the... Uh, West uh, Middle School. West Middle School. So all of these are Chair, uh, through, through you, Councils. is that is that going to be in the auditorium or the cafeteria? I'm sorry, it's in the auditorium. Auditorium. Thank you. Council, Council Dubois. Um, they have a moment of personal Yes, you may, Council. Thank you so much. So I, um, I'm not with this group, but i just like the people at home to know that there is going to be another informational meeting about the casino, and this is put on by a group of people with Brockton Interfaith who are against the casino. So I'm going to be going to both and I'm not part of either group, um, but it is going to be at Trinity Baptist Church this Tuesday, and I believe that's at 7 p.m. as well. If anybody else knows the specifics and wanted to share, that would be great. So there's one on Tuesday and Thursday, so you could see us twice if you wanted to come to the meetings. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor, is there any other, uh, any other business? Thank you, uh, Attorney Gilday, for Thanks. being here this evening. Any other questions, anything? Meeting adjourned. I'll hang out. There you go. In the seat, I'm man. Yes, you are. Good night. Right, good. Thank you. Uh,